Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, before I get uh, started, I'd really like to thank my staff uh, for, for helping with this process. Uh, Jolene Aiken, Marvin Lewis, Shoshana Engel, and I.O. Taylor Dixon all played a significant role in, in, um, in making this happen. When you go into search mode, it's, it's 24 hours a day until you get it done. And um, they definitely helped me get it done. I want to thank uh, Bud Peterson and, uh, and Lynn Durham for, for their help. There's not, I don't know that there's a, another president in the, con, con, in the country that you can call on a Friday night and they're uh, in Tampa first thing Saturday morning so that they can talk with um, the candidate that you've identified. So Bud, really, really appreciate that. Uh, Dan Walters and Jeff Schimmel of uh, College Sports Solutions uh, helped with logistics and um, when you're going through a search process like this you need help and um, they definitely uh, uh, made this as seamless as possible and helped us uh, as we cast a very very uh, large net and talked to a lot of candidates. Uh, I'd like to thank Josh Passner. Um, most people don't realize it, but um, he volunteered to work out the women's team uh, so that they would not lay, uh, lose a step um, while we were in the search process. And, um, and so I'd like to thank him for stepping up and volunteering to, to work with our, with our women uh, during this transition. And a special thank you to uh, Deputy AD Mark Roundtree who unfortunately lost his mom in the middle of this search and can't be here today, but played a significant role in making this happen, starting with um, having a long-term uh, friendship that started at Louisiana Tech with Coach Fortner and um, was, uh, was actually our uh, initial contact. So um, I know Mark is incredibly uh, uh, happy uh, that... Uh, that we were able to, 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 to bring, this, uh, bring this result to conclusion. We cast a large net. We were looking for a very, very special coach uh, that could uh, take over what we consider a very, very special program. We have an incredible group of young women and they were the focus of our search, not only in how do we help them uh, transition, but how do we uh, create a program and help them uh, with the dreams they had, uh, help, help them fulfill the dreams they had when they decided to join Georgia Tech in the first place. We looked at the, the defining or the, our priorities that guided the search was, and people that have heard me speak have heard me talk about it a lot, culture. We're looking at culture, recruiting, developing the everyday champion student athlete and winning. And those were the things that we were focused on um, as we looked to find the right person to lead this program. I found that person who I am incredibly excited to have join our team. Her success and accomplishments are self-explanatory, whether it's uh, conference championships, gold medals, or halls of fame. Her pedigree speaks, speaks for itself. It's, incredibly, it's incredible when you look at the background, uh, look at her background and the coaches that she either played for, coached with, or now actually coached. She has a blue blood background when it comes to women's basketball. When I asked her why she wanted this job, she said, because I want to make a difference. And at Georgia Tech, that's what we do. We make a difference by developing the young people that will change the world. I want to now introduce you to our, the new head coach of women's basketball at Georgia Tech, Coach Nell Fordner. That's my playing number. 
I made that famous before Michael Jordan, right? Guess what? It's my play in number two. That's a I didn't make it that famous. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. I, I appreciate that. I, I am so incredibly honored to be standing here right now and excited about the future of Georgia Tech women's basketball. And I'm really, really happy that this team is sitting right here. So thank you for being here. Um, this has been a very uh, fast process. Um, the final four was going on. I was deep in work, heavy in work with ESPN. And all of a sudden, boy, it was like a, it was like a merry-go-round um, with Georgia Tech and a very good one at that. I had to stop. I woke up this morning and I thought, is this really happening? Is, is, this, is this really happening? And then I thought, oh, yeah, it's happening because yesterday you piled in 48 hours of work in a 24-hour day. Because once this job got announced, it was, it was on. It was a very, uh, very busy day. We got straight to work. The people who I plan on bringing on board on my staff, we, we, were, we were hard at it. You know, I know I should be maybe a little bit nervous, and maybe I am a little bit nervous standing up here speaking, but I'm going to tell you what I'm really nervous about, spilling something on this white suit. <laughs> I can tell you that. I, I don't wear a lot of white, but this is a lot of white. And I was trying to get my Georgia Tech colors together, but I don't wear a lot of this color blue on TV. I wear a little different shade. So I had to work really hard to get this together to be here today. Thank you, Karen, Todd's wife, for, for the necklace. So I have some gold. So I, I appreciate that because if I didn't have this, it would just be blue and white. And I know that gold is very important. But, yeah. but again, I'm, I'm very, very excited and, and so honored to be here. Let me tell you my number one priority. My number one priority is the players on this team right now and keeping this roster intact. That is my number one priority. And I look forward to getting to work along, just my, not just myself, but my staff, getting it on board so we can, we can do what's necessary to make sure this team stays together. Because this is an excellent team. They have a lot of potential. They can be really, really good. And I look at it like this. They can stay here and play for a new coach and not have to move out of the dorm or their apartment or not have to go meet a new team. Or they can go somewhere else and play for a new coach and have to meet a new team and be a, become a part of a new team. And I hope they want to stay right here. And I hope everyone will help and encourage them to stay right here. Georgia Tech is a special place. And they came here to get a Georgia Tech degree and to be champions. And that's what myself and my staff plan to do, is help them be champions on and off the court. Look forward to helping make that happen. I am fast and busy at work in hiring uh, people that I have worked with in the past, and I'm looking forward to getting them on campus and getting the ball rolling right here. I am so honored to be a part of such a tremendous academic institution. And when I met President Peterson in Tampa, he was on it when it came to academics. <laughs> and he made sure that I understood what kind of institution I would be a part of. And I appreciate that because it is the, re the number one reason we want to bring kids to campus and, and compete athletically is so they can get a fine academic degree and go out and change the world and have a positive and an awesome experience on the basketball court as well. So I look forward to making that happen, helping make that happen with this team right here. What a good looking bunch right here. Really <laughs> proud that they're sitting right here, you're here. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, Georgia Tech, Todd Stansberry, Mark, Mark Roundtree, Jolene Aiken, Marvin Lewis, gosh, for coming to Tampa. Y'all, if you could have seen the first meeting between us, let me tell you. I was in a warm-up suit. I had come straight from practice, one of the final four teams, and they're like, Nell, we don't care how you're dressed, just get here. Okay, well, it's burning up hot. I'm going to be sweating. I get to the hotel. There's no air conditioner in this room. It is burning up hot in this room. Todd is in a cab listening to the first part of the interview on the speakerphone of a cell phone. And it's me and Jolene and Mark and Marvin talking. 
he gets there, he's in pretty much a warm-up suit, so it made me feel really good. I like that. But when I walked out of that room, I knew that this was going, could be the right fit if, I, if we could make this happen because I'm a people person first. It is about relationships for me. It is about helping people. Making a difference is very important to me. When I walked out of the room, I felt that from Todd and from Jolene and from Mark and from Marvin. Was the, the conversation was very fluid and natural and, and good. I got another call, I came back, and then I met President Peterson. Thank you for coming down there and taking the time to do that. And I know it was hard, probably tough on your schedule, but it was very important. I was so impressed by that. So I was, it was just, everything just kind of fit. And I, this, when I walked out of the room after meeting Bud, I was like, this fits. This just fits. I didn't know if I would get the job. I didn't know if they would offer it to me. So I'm very blessed that they did. So to Georgia Tech, I'm happy to be here. Todd, thank you. I can't wait to get started. Oh, well, wait. I already have. That's right. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, at this, at this time for media who are in attendance, we'll open it up for questions. If you could, please raise your hand, get a microphone, and identify yourself and your organization uh, so uh, Coach Fortner can start putting names with faces. Questions just for Coach Fortner at this time. At the conclusion, we'll have some one-on-one -on -one time available for uh, Coach Fortner and for Todd Stansberry, and, uh, and we'll just go ahead and proceed with that. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Georgia Tech. Thank uh, you. Rod McKenzie with GoJackets.com on the 247 Sports Network. Hey, Rod. Uh, when it was made public that, that Georgia Tech was starting a coaching search, uh, in your dreams, did you think you'd be standing here today? Um, no. I think that you, well, you can dream about it, but I, I, I did not, I hadn't started imagining it at that point. So, but I knew, I, I knew Georgia Tech was a job I would be interested in, yes. Coach Tori McElhaney from The Athletic. Tor did you say Tori? Yes. Tori, um, I don't want to say it's outside of the realm of possibilities that Georgia Tech wasn't the first program that kind of came knocking at your door in the past five to seven years. So what really, I know you said it was a good fit for you, but what really was it about Georgia Tech that kind of, you're like, okay, you know, this is it. This is my yeah. time to get back in it. You know, in working with ESPN the last six years, I've, I've been so fortunate to be able to go around the country, be in every practice, whether it was a men's practice or a women's practice, to talk to coaches, to watch uh, all kinds of practices. Really enjoyed that. So I never left the game, but I, had, I was recharging my battery, re-energizing. This year, I got bit. I got bit bad by the coaching bug. I was like, I need to jump back in this thing. But the only way I'm going to do that is in the right situation, if the right fit comes along. I've always admired Georgia Tech. And I've, I've always believed that this, this could be a great program. And look, it, and it's, had some, it's had some excellent days, no doubt about it, excellent days. So when it opened up, I thought, yes, that is a, that's a place I would like to be. I'm a Southern girl, and Atlanta is Southern. <laughs> We're still in the South. People can understand me when I talk. <laughs> because let me tell you what, when you go around the country, they can't always understand you, you know? Um, so I feel very comfortable with that here. But I knew that um, I was very interested in this job when it opened up. When you looked at the, at the roster and all the girls coming back, did that get you even more excited about what, what you're going to be uh, working with? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. I think this is an extremely talented roster. It's full of potential. It's got... Um, you know, and, and that's why I say my number one priority is keeping it intact. I think it would be, you know, ho hopefully we can do that. And uh, I think the potential is limitless for what they can accomplish. You know, they already have a year, two years, uh, several of them, three years under their belt here. Let's continue to grow that and, and, and see what it can do. Ken Seguir with the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Ken, yes, nice um, to meet you. Likewise, I'm curious. In the previous cycles, had there been opportunities for you to kind of feelers as far as do you want to come back? And I'm curious how you approach those. 
Um, yes, there were, and it just, I wasn't ready. Um, I really was enjoying my, my time at ESPN, and I just wasn't ready. So, and that's why I go back and say it had to be a situation where I felt like it could be a good fit. And after that first meeting, <laughs> I knew it was a good, I, I knew it w could be a good fit. So, um, this was the right time and the right place. I know it's been a whirlwind for you, but have you had a chance to, to reach out to any of the girls who signed their letters of intent to introduce yourself to them? Um, you know, I have. I have, and everything's very positive. Yep. More questions for Coach Fortner? Um, I think Todd mentioned that, that Mark was your first contact. I'm curious just how that, when that happened and when that, what that conversation was, was like. Yeah, it was um, it was a really good conver. It was a very positive conversation. Just um, just that initial contact. Would you be interested in talking to us and, and that sort of thing? So yeah, it was just very positive. More questions for Coach Porter? Coach, uh, Steve. Hey, Steve. We, we all know. Yeah. You know, in, in anything that you're going to do, in, in anything you're trying to accomplish in a team setting, trust is the number one, it's the number one thing. So that is something that will, that will be built and, can, you know, built on every day. All you can do is earn it. You have to earn it. And you have to be honest about how you're doing things and going about your business, um, both sides, the staff, the players. And um, eventually it all comes around and, and mix and and meshes. So it's one of the most, it might be the most important piece of the puzzle. Um, I was going to ask you, you've been out of the game for several years, four years, correct? Mm -hmm. What last time you were head coach um, to that game, to today's game, what has, what has changed and what do you plan on bringing to the game? Yeah, well, what has changed, and I, I'll just speak from having covered it intensely <laughs> for six years. It's a much faster game. It's, there's a lot more points being put on the board. Uh, the athletes are faster. You've got bigger players at different positions. Like you've got six foot six two point guards at times. Um, you've got uh, you've got six foot five players six, shooting a three ball. You know, it's kind of the women's game kind of follows the men's game. It might take a little bit longer to get to that exact game, but. You know, we're seeing a lot of five out now or four out around one. But points on the board, a lot more scoring, a lot faster paced game. And um, you, you've seen some tremendous defense, too. If you watch the final four, there were a lot of points on the board, but there were some great defensive plays, too. So um, I think the game is just at a higher level than it was when I got out, but it's still basketball. Anything else for Coach Fortner? First job at, at Purdue. Um, yes. Was, the circumstances were, were roughly similar. I'm curious if there's something you can draw on from having been through this before of a situation where it's kind of fractured that, that can help you in this, in this uh, situation. Um, yeah, I think that you know, you know, coaches, you draw on everything. You you draw on every experience that you've ever had. So I, I can go down the line at different. At, you know, different places, different times, and draw on those experiences. So that's kind of how I look at it. Everything kind of gets into the pot, and you and you um, you learn from that, and you move forward with it. Anything else? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make uh, both Todd and Coach Fortner uh, available very briefly uh, for some one-on-ones up here at the front of the room. Um, we're going to have to keep it brief because I know that we have a, a meet and greet going on out, uh, out on the other side of this room. Um, so we'll keep that uh, pretty brief. Student athletes will not be available for, uh, for media today. We'll make them available in the near future after they've had a little bit of time to get to know Coach Fortner. Um, but they will not be available today, uh, just uh, Todd and Coach Fortner today. 
We thank everybody for coming out. I uh, appreciate it, although it was on relatively short notice. And uh, thanks again. Thank you.